this here is the Dyson Sphere program. That's the source of data I chose to um, to grab. That's uh, this is a video game uh, that has been released by uh, a small Chinese developer uh, studio. It's just five developers, I believe. It's still in early access, uh, which is like kind of an open beta test, but paid one. Uh, and you know, as I talk about the game, let me show you a one minute trailer. I'll talk over the trailer just to uh, describe what's happening with the game. So basically, this is a game about resource management collection. It's a new genre of game they call factory building game. So you start with nothing, you collect very basic resources just you know to fuel your your mech or your robot, and then you start uh, collecting uh, raw resources. Like here, there's iron ore being collected. Uh, so you start automating stuff that you do manually. Uh, you transport uh, resources with like conveyor belts, you can store them and then you start processing them. So for example, iron ore uh, gets smelted into iron ingots and then, you know, smelted into steel and then, you know, complex products. And as you can see here, you build massive uh, factories and not just across like one planet, but actually multiple planets, multiple solar systems in the, uh, they call it the star cluster of the galaxy. And the end goal is uh, to launch solar uh, sails, or as they call them, solar sails into orbit and build those uh, Dyson spheres, as the game suggests. Dyson spheres are basically uh, gigantic structures around stars that harness their energies, right? So it's, it gets pretty, the scale gets big pretty quickly. Um, so, so the second reason I, I chose this, not just because I, I really love the game, and I myself, like while playing it, used to do like uh, spreadsheets while playing it to uh, to track, you know, my consumption and production and, and logistics and resources, but also it kind of resembles a real life um, supply chain operation, I would say, even if it's a simple one, because there's a lot of, um, you know, production and consumption data going on, logistics and things like that. Um, so for the scope of the project, I wanted to have the game running, extract uh, a streaming data from the game as it is running and process it through Edwin's pipeline and then represent it as, um, as a graphical uh, data in the end for analysis. So here's the pipeline. Um, now, most of it, like starting here, this is Edwin's pipeline, basically very little ha has changed, but this part here is mine. So. So basically, while the game is running, I wrote, well, I, I, I took one of the mods that were already present for the game and heavily edited for the purposes of this project. Um, so this mod uh, written in C-sharp extracts game data in JSON format and uploads it to uh, S3 bucket. And that gets updated every 30 seconds. I found that to be kind of an optimal frequency uh, because uh, the game, uh, like I don't want to use a lot of resources so that the game doesn't crash, right? So, and then um, a fast API is an application uh, that uh, will read the, the JSON file and output its data to an HTTP URL. And I wanted to, the reason I wanted to do that is so ca I can have a very similar entry point to the bus, uh, the bus data into NiFi so that I didn't have to change a lot in the pipeline, right? And then the rest of the pipeline, I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, but, you know, very quickly, NiFi just grabs, reads the data from the URL, transforms it into my SQL, my, uh, stores it into my, uh, transforms it into SQL format, sorry, uh, stores it into my SQL running on EC2, and then Debezium Connect connects that to uh, MSK Kafka, and then a Scala code uh, spins up Spark Streaming to do ET ETL, uh, to transform it into Parquet with Hoodie to attach metadata. Uh, and then um, uh, the Parquet file is, is put on S3 and then Amazon Glue, run, uh, basically uh, started by Hoodie, integrates the data into a database. Uh, and then Athena uh, is connected to Superset to uh, run queries so that the Superset can show us a graphical representation of the data. So I have to say that developing the, the mod for the game in C-sharp took the bulk of, of the time and effort uh, for this project. And the reason is I had to learn a lot from scratch. So I am pretty new to coding, like 
the, this program is is my first uh, real uh, foray into into coding, right? And I mainly learned Python. I didn't even like go head into Scala. So C sharp was really really difficult for me. So it took me a lot of time to to learn it in two weeks. Uh, and of course, Visual Studio community community. I had to learn that to uh, to be able to run uh, C sharp uh, effectively. And then you know I, I needed to learn how mods work in games and this particular uh, game code how it worked because the mod integrates with the game code itself. So that took the bulk of my time and effort. So the features added just uh, as mentioned earlier, the the mod took the bulk of the time and fast API uh, to grab the data and some custom uh, Docker images. So now let's go to the live demo. Uh, so I have the game running here, right? So um, this here is a debugger uh, or let's say a logger that's attached to the game that extracts, uh, that basically uh, shows me uh, stuff. So I, I programmed my uh, C-sharp mod to output the data here as well as to the S3 bucket. So if we go to the S3 bucket, and do a refresh, this is the JSON file that's, uh, that's having all the data. We can see that the date is, uh, the, the time is, is just now, right? So it's pretty updated. Every 30 seconds, this file is updated. And then uh, we, FastAPI is running on the EC2. So this is just the EC2 IP with the port for uh, FastAPI. Uh, we can see that the data is being grabbed here. And then uh, from here, of course, NiFi uh, grabs the data from the HTTP, uh, transforms it into SQL and then puts it to a, a MySQL table. And here we can see the MySQL table. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll show you the schema um, if you wanna see that because Edwin asked about that in, uh, sorry, in Nasser's, um, so describe SP. So basically um, we're uh, extracting uh, product names, uh, planet names and stars name, star names for the star system and production actual, uh, consumption actual, production theoretical, consumption theoretical. I'll talk about this later when we, uh, when we see the graphical representation for the data, uh, how many buildings are producing, consuming, and this is a uh, game time elapsed to track uh, how much time has passed since the game has started and a unique game identifier to yeah, to identify each game basically by um, the number that has been given for the for the random generation for the star cluster event time to use as a pre-combined key and uh, this uh, this uh, is a combined of uh, product planet el and elapsed time uh, to use as the main key so if we do a uh, count here we should see that the number has increased from this to this, right? So that means we're getting data. And if we look here at the Kafka streaming, I already have everything started, so we don't uh, waste a lot of time on that. There's just so much to present in so little time. We can also see uh, Spark streaming running on EMR, which uh, takes us to uh, um, the output S3 bucket. If we look here, we'll see that the last partition is also updated just now. Uh, and if we run a query on Athena on the game time elapsed to make sure uh, that because this number always moves forward when the streaming, so it just changed, which takes us to the final part, which is a uh, superset. Uh, so I've prepared a simple uh, bar chart here uh, to represent the important data. Um, so, each uh, each entry here is uh, a product, and uh, this is a, a representation of the summation of all the production and consumption uh, data for all the products uh, across all planets, right? So uh, we have first uh, production actual and production uh, and consumption actual, and then uh, production and consumption theoretical. So basically, the actual um, data is for uh, what is happening right now. So if only if the buildings are running, uh, basically the facilities uh, are running, then it will give us uh, these information here. And the reason why the theoretical data is usually uh, much higher because not all building, not all facilities are running at the same time. Sometimes there's not enough uh, power to run them all. Sometimes there's backlog because um, it's uh, uh, the the production has been full, like it has filled the storage, and there's no need to run 
the facility anymore or there's not enough resources to run. Uh, but here, uh, the uh, theoretical data is the maximum uh, maximum capacity if everything is running at full capacity, which is very uh, like when playing the game, this can be useful to know, okay, like I just want to build in enough buildings, enough facilities to make sure I fulfill my needs, and then I will troubleshoot and see if the buildings are running or not, right? So for the live demo, I'll draw your attention to uh, the iron ore and iron ingots. So uh, right now, iron ore production is a bit higher, so we're producing a bit more than we're consuming, which is good. But the iron ingots, which are a direct product of smelting the iron ore, uh, were a bit deficient in it, and this is kind of an important resource. Yes, we're actually producing a bit more, but I want to make sure that uh, the, the capacity is enough to produce more in general if everything is running at full capacity. So let's go to the game real quick and uh, do something about that. So we'll fly from our home planet here to our smelting planet. And this here is the Dyson sphere uh, that I talked about. This is basically uh, a gigantic structure that is harnessing the energy uh, from the star. And I, I'll show you real quick the scale. Like this is just one uh, solar system, star system, right? And this is the entire galaxy that you can, you can, you know, play in. And basically right now you can see like these little dots are uh, transport chips that are transporting resources across star system. So you can see, uh, you know, the scale of this and how it can get really, really big and the need for analysis on the data. Uh, so now we'll just warp real quick to our smelting planet here and you'll see it's, it's red because I, I color coded it with colored concrete, uh, so red is for smelting. So this is my smelting uh, planet where I do all the smelting. So we'll just, what we'll do with, so this is kind of late in the game. So we have something called blueprints that we can use to just uh, stamp down uh, uh, basically um, pre-configured uh, combinations of buildings. And so what I'm doing now is just telling uh, the game that, hey, uh, I want to stamp down these buildings, right? So my little drones, will, uh, construction drones will just go out and start uh, constructing buildings. Uh, so the big towers are uh, logistics um, uh, stations that uh, we can put ships in them and they will, uh, so we can demand, so we're demanding iron ore and we're taking in iron ingots. Right, and uh, we have to get warpers first to uh, let the ships travel across uh, star systems. So uh, the iron ore will come over here, but it will be smelted and will go back with, uh, with conveyor belts to the iron ingots to be transported where it is needed. So even though the buildings are still not operation, we should see a change soon in the uh, theoretical uh, values here. So in a little bit, so make note of the, uh, of the green value here. Uh, it's uh, 54.1. That's how much iron ingots we're uh, producing right now, theoretically. And uh, the consumption of iron ore, that's 82.1K right now. So um, yeah, so we, we, we'll see that it slowly the, uh, the production of iron ingots so this is refreshed every 30 seconds and the pipeline takes a little bit to, to process the data, of course, with all the steps, but with every refresh, we should, we should start seeing um, a change. So iron ingots uh, production will increase and also the consumption for iron ore uh, will increase as uh, more buildings are being built. I'll just one more refresh here. So more and more, this is happening. And yeah, this, uh, this tells us that the pipeline is working and that um, this is capturing data in real time. Uh, if we have more time, I'd, I'd show you more, you know, maybe after the, the rest of the presentation, I know I'm already running a bit long, but just uh, my final slides here, basically this is what I learned and improved that, of course, C Sharp and, and other components, Fast API I never used before, and I never uh, made a game mod before, so I had to write code that uh, modified the game uh, code. Um, the features I wanted to use, I wanted to use AKS, but I didn't have enough time for that. Uh, most of the time was dedicated to uh, building the mod and making sure the rest of the pipeline worked. And other features I would add with time. Uh, here are my uh, public source code repos. So anyone uh, 
is invited to look at them. Uh, they're public. And these are my Docker Hub images also. And I have to give special thanks first to the, the modding community for the game. Uh, they, uh, they've they been really helpful and uh, and they, they helped me build that mod and understand and even set up my, my C-sharp environment and, and everything. So they helped a lot. Uh, and of course, Stan and Jeng and Nat, Stan and Jeng helped me a lot troubleshoot my pipeline and build it. And especially Stan helped me with setting up fast API. And Nat uh, advised me on uh, on the, the architecture of the project. And of course, Edwin, you know, taught taught, <laughs> taught me everything. I know almost the data engineering. Uh, and you know, since this is the uh, theoretically the last day of uh, of the of the course, at least for part timers, I want to thank you know my colleagues and everyone who helped me and everyone who uh, who's involved in this program. And real quick, if we go back here, so yeah, you'll see that. There's a big difference now in the data, right? There's production of iron ingots is a lot bigger now, 91, right? Theoretically, uh, but iron ore, uh, you can see it's just shifted because it's the biggest value now. It's it wants to consume a lot more. So now we know, you know, we want to go back and, and maybe mine more iron ore to balance this out, right? But yeah, this is the uh, the end of my presentation. Sorry for uh, running a bit long, and uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions. Wow, I mean, uh, like, like great idea, great project, fantastic completion. I mean, like, congratulations. I think this is, uh, I think it made it probably to the top three uh, project. It's very oh, wow. <laughs> for Stan's uh, completion. <laughs> very kind of you, thank you very much. Seriously, I mean, from zero programming skills and all the way where you are right now, man, I'm so proud of you, uh, proud of, you know, what you have, have been accomplished. Uh, great job. Uh, yes, Dan, do you wanna do you wanna say something? Uh, yeah, Sammy, uh, amazing projects. I'm really glad to see this project coming along. Great presentation. Uh, yeah, uh, good job. Uh, I'm really proud of you as well. <laughs> awesome. You couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, good like, job, I really wanna invite you for like more of you know like how did you get up to speed on you know all the skill sets you have been uh, acquired so far i mean like great job um any other questions from the rest of the folks good job sammy it's great to see you have a high quality um uh, presentations and the, the project um yeah really uh happy for you Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, just a comment. Instead of like looking for uh, an API, you build your own API. That's that's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you.